Welcome to the Lalula Podcast, real life conversations about modern sexuality and how to live a happy, healthy, turned on life. I'm your host, Laura Allen, a holistic health coach and founder of Lalula, an online platform offering natural erotica toys as well as the educational tools you need to expand your pleasure in and outside the bedroom. Welcome back to another episode of the Lalula Podcast. I am so so excited to share this interview with you. Today, I am talking with Ayal from IntimatePower.com. And Ayal is the author of Orgasm Unleashed, your guide to pleasure, healing, and power. And we dive into so much amazing content in this episode. We talk about pleasure, not only for women, but for men as well. We talk about desire. We talk about lust. We talk about how to really own what we want and what we need in the bedroom and just so, so, so much more. It's full of juice. I'm so excited for you to hear about it. And and when you finish listening to this episode, make sure that you comment with your feedback, with your key takeaways, with everything that you got out of it, either on the show notes or on our Instagram post or any of the platforms that you have listened to this on. <sighs> Enjoy the show. Welcome back again, Ayal. Um, such a pleasure to have you, uh, and thank you for being so patient with all the technical difficulties. Um, yeah, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. And you know, the technical uh, side is probably mine because I'm in uh, in Bali, Indonesia, and I have tropical internet. <laughs> Yeah, tropical internet. It's an interesting type of internet, but I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna make it work. So, let's just dive in. And uh, the first question that I have for you actually is, what color are you today, and why? I'm wearing white. Um, mm. I don't think white is such a spiritual color. Sometimes you know people mistaken mistaking that, but for me it just feels. Today I was like, what do I feel like? Yeah, white. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, all white and uh, natural, all natural white. fibers, natural mm. fibers, hand woven. Beautiful, and it is a light color. You know, it's like a pure kind of light color. Do you feel that, or is it just just white for you? Sometimes it's not what I feel; it's what I want to feel. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, I love that dressing yeah. for how you want to feel. Mm. Yeah, like yesterday, I wore. I, I had my birthday two days ago, so so I was wearing like some of my best clothes. And like we really like design the stuff, and uh, and uh, today I felt like simple, you know, so I'm wearing very simple clothes. Mm. I'm very much into uh, into men's fashion, and you know, so so yeah, that's for me part of living a tantric life and enjoying everything that life has to offer, and being mm. in harmony and sync, and you know, who am who I am, what I feel, and nature, and you know, fair trade, and people, and so on. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely something to be said about experiencing pleasure through what we wear, right? How the mm. how the fibers feel on our skin, how we feel when we're wearing these things. Do we feel beautiful yeah. and radiant or do we feel like we've just, you know, been in our track pants for a week? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, great point. So I'd love to talk to you about your book, Orgasm Unleashed, and hear a little bit about what brought you to writing this content and how you've navigated uh, working in this field as a man. Mm. Um, and yeah, just a little bit about your journey, really. Um, so the book, uh, Orgasm Unleashed, Your Guide to Pleasure, Healing and Power, is an orgasm guide for women um, intending to support them in becoming multi-orgasmic. It's like a self-help manual, uh, becoming multi-orgasmic by themselves without mm -hmm. needing somebody else and then sharing it with somebody else. And uh, usually the, the question that I get is, no, you are, you are you know, similar to what you said, uh, you are a man, you are man, how can you write a female orgasm book? Which is a fair question. And uh, I would I would first say that... that um, the book has been endorsed by many female sexuality educators 
and many women from adjacent fields, you know, personal development and healing and, you know, a, a sexologist that says, that says, wow, nobody taught me any of this in, you know, in university, but he like it's, yeah. So that's, uh, first of all, to say that, uh, mm. and obviously endorsed by, by, by many women who read them who are not professionals and it just worked for them. Mm. Um, and yeah, my journey has been that I've always been interested in sex and sexuality, you know, and obviously I wanted to get laid like, like any other guy, um, but also there was a there was an interest, uh, a very deep interest in connecting with women, understanding women, pleasuring women, healing women, mm. um, and um, and yeah, I've I've had kind of like a semi traumatic experience when I was young when I watched uh, I watched a a rape scene um, on on cinema, but for me it, it felt really real, so I kind of like it set me on a. Like years later, I realized it set me on the path to to become a sexual healer. Um, so yeah, I've I followed that uh, for years. I was always kind of like the guy that was the the the, the confidant, and you know, the guy that was helping the women around. And uh, and um, yeah, I discovered tantra back in two thousand five. What is it? Fourteen years ago. Mm-hmm. And from the first moment, I started practicing what was then called yoni massage. I, I haven't called it yoni massage since 2011, but back then, I was calling it that. So, so making love with women, and then, and then also as a form of pleasure, uh, practicing yoni massage, or vaginal massage, or vaginal stimulation, mm-hmm. and generally just holding space and and seeing what seeing what happens, and. Um, and yeah, I've done that a lot. And yeah, there were there were years that I was very, very sexually active. Um, very sexually active means sometimes, you know, 10, 20 hours of actually love making a week and, you know, multiple partners and everything. Mm. Um, so yeah, there was definitely a lot of that. So there's then a lot of started- personal experience in the field. Yeah, you know, I didn't study this, this stuff in uni. I mean, no offense to any sex- sexologist, but... <laughs> But uh, you know what I what I do is is informed you know by by actual experiences, not not something in the lab, you know, with you know women with electrodes and whatever. Yeah. So, um, but I guess so there's yeah. a difference when it's coming from a place of kind of pure curiosity and like what your intention is, right? Um, yeah. As opposed to just kind of being um, an egoic sort of like I need to get laid by X many people to feel sort of good about yeah. myself. Uh, there was there was that as well, you know. Let's let's admit it. You know, I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not uh, I'm not completely pure. I don't know about other people, but I'm pretty sure you know that that there's mm. no like absolute anything. You know, so I I, I own mm. that and I acknowledge that. And yeah, there was there was uh, many women who were saying, you know, it's like you're really good at this. You should offer this as a service, like you know, sexual healing and so on. Because because you know, woman after woman after woman after woman, I've helped orgasm for the first time and. Um, and, you know, heal, you know, rape stuff and, and abuse stuff. And um, so, yeah, women said you should offer this as a service. And I didn't think it was good enough. And then somebody said, you're already doing it. So just do it. And right. I did. And uh, a woman called Leila Martin was my first client. Uh, now she's a big uh, sexuality educator. Mm. And I actually worked with, I worked with many women who were, who either turned out to be sexuality educators or already sexuality educators and healers and coaches and so on. So I'm sometimes kind of like the, the healer for healers or the coach for coaches. <laughs> um, so yeah. And then, and then I got tired of, of saying the same thing and explaining the same thing in sessions. And I decided to write the book and uh, the book was a big, big uh, project. And uh, I had uh, one primary female edit- editor and her boss who was a woman and the spell checker was al- also a woman um, so yeah, there was, uh, there was, uh, very, very wise women involved in the, in the process of this book and, uh, mm. yeah. yeah, so that's, uh, yeah. so that's the book, the book part. Yeah. Beautiful. And so what about men? I mean, do you work with, with men in the same capacity? I mean, obviously not, uh, with the yoni massage, but I mean, do you help men sort of break past these emotional barriers that they might have or, um, helping men sort of reach optimal pleasure states as well? Or Yeah. So there's some of my work. So I'm, I'm mainly focused on women, but actually, um, I have two online programs, which are actually for men. Uh, one of them is ejaculation control, uh, lasting longer mm-hmm. than thirty days, mm. and uh, this this is again something one of the one of the many things that changed my life. You know, when I studied sexual tantra and, and general How so? tantra. Um, you know the Matrix when Neo wakes up, 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's similar to that when you understand, when you start to understand that sex is not what, that I started to understand that sex is not what I, what I experienced before. And mind you, I was already having like really good sex and, and controlling my ejaculation and having, you know, some, some very deep experiences. Mm. But, but what, um, what changed is that when I started to understand it, I don't have to ejaculate every time I make love. Uh, it's not just the, the, the ending that, that changes. It changes the whole experience. Okay. It changes how I view, um, um, sex, you know, and that's sometimes what I ask, you know, men and people like, what, why do you have sex? Cause most people, it's, it's always geared towards the ending. It's always geared towards the peak and the resolution and coming together and all of that stuff. I sometimes say mm. that uh, coming together is very easy when you're coming for an hour. So, mm, I say. So yeah, in and terms with- of, of uh, just just um, to to complete the question, uh, to complete the answer, um, personal power and energy and um, and connection to my pleasure and uh, obviously being able to stay with a woman when she's orgasming uh, or she's on an orgasmic wave for hours, you know. So that's that's mm. one of the practices that's really. Um, really changed my life and i've i've been teaching this to men in, in workshops and one-on-one and now through the program um and then there's also another program uh, teaching men how to connect with uh pleasure heal um and empower women which is also something we can talk about mm, beautiful and so why is pleasure why is pleasure important hmm. do you think <laughs> <laughs> I know it seems like an obvious question for for maybe you and me, but yeah, I think no, a lot it's a of great it's a great really... question. It's a really great question. Um, yeah. I know that for myself, many years, even in tantra, you know, it's like a lot of things were were disembodied. You know, I was living more more in my head. There's more like theories and ideas and so on. And pleasure is pleasure. I can say is part of embodiment. You know, I like to embodiment mm. is a word I like very much. I'm also a a dancer and a dance teacher and, and stuff. So, so pleasure is, is kind of like our birthright, which is one of the things that, um, that I write in the book. And, um, as, as a society, we are brought up and we are disconnected from pleasure, you know, so, so a young boy or young girl would touch themselves and the parents would either, you know, shout at them and punish them or hit them or whatever. Or they would just have this really, really uneasy energy, uneasy feeling that the kids totally pick up on. Okay, so mm. the kids grow up with uh, with um, internalized message that my pleasure is wrong. You know, touching my body is wrong. Touching my genitals is wrong. Mm. Okay, so as a society, you know, we talk a lot about Me Too and stuff. So yeah, Me Too is important that there's a movement and, you know, people are being brought to, brought to justice, but it's only dealing with the symptoms. It's actually not, not dealing with the causes. So as long as there's sexual, sexual repression and sexual miseducation, there's going to be sexual abuse. There's going to be sexual dysfunction. You know, there's like yeah. huge numbers of, of women who never in their life experience like a real orgasm. You know, it's like maybe they experience like a five second, 10 second contraction, you know, and maybe a few of them and they think that they're orgasmic, but that's not really a, that's not really an orgasmic experience. Okay. Or that's, let's, let's say it's a very limited orgasmic experience. And, uh, you know, with men, you know, lasting on average five minutes, 5.4 minutes, it's a symptom of a problem. Uh, infidelity, mm. you know, it's like infidelity is a symptom of a problem. Relationship breaking down because of the, the, the uh, lack of intimacy is a symptom of a problem. So, yeah, sorry to, uh, <laughs> you know, like got, <laughs> I talked about pleasure and got really like uh, serious and negative. Um, so, yeah. We, this is some of the reasons we're disconnected from pleasure. Obviously, the major religions, uh, you know, that I come from one of them as well. I was born Jewish. Yeah, which, uh, right. Yeah, my father would like to believe I'm still Jewish. Um, and also, the major religion, you know, sex, sex is a sin. How can you, like, how can you live your life if, you are, if you're a Christian um, with, the, you know, holding the, 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 being subscribed to a religion that says sex is a sin, the original sin, and so on. And it's not just this, throughout, throughout uh, both religion and, you know, society and the myths that we run, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stories that are actually against pleasure and against, um, I wouldn't say hedonism, hedonism is kind of like on the far side, but kind of like against embodiment. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's why pleasure, and, and yeah, and that's the negative. So when, when somebody is connecting to their pleasure and connecting to their 
sexual power to the um, independent sexuality they're not dependent on somebody else uh they become they become independent they become less um less able to control you know and i'm not subscribing to I'm not subscribing to uh conspiracy theories necessarily you know but they are once you start doing this work you start seeing the the, the world in a different way okay and the way that definitely i live is different than than uh how most people live their life you know i don't have an eight to eight to five uh, job i don't take you know a uh, two weeks annual leave i don't you know i don't do a lot mm. of things that uh so, so yeah, you just start to be, to see life. And by the way, it's totally okay if you have a job and if you have, you know, five kids and if you are working towards retirement and whatever, but you can still have an amazing life. And it will be more, more amazing when you embrace pleasure, embodiment, sexuality, um, desire, lust even, you know, and yeah. shadows around that as well. And then everything oh. else, um, gets much more color and depth. Okay, and I've, for example, I worked with a Christian couple, you know, that, you know, as I told her, you don't have to like have sex with, you know, <laughs> many dozens of people uh, like I have. Uh, you can just be with your husband and you can make that into your, your, your practice, into your Christian practice. Mm. Yeah, I love what you say about that. I love how you say about pleasure being like an, an embodiment practice as well, because pleasure exists in the body and not in the mind and I think that that's another huge reason why we're so disconnected from it like you were saying in this kind of you know modern society modern western society where we live our nine-to-five jobs and blah, 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 we're all so busy and that involves us being in our head a lot and there's just no room there's no spaciousness to like stop and smell the roses yeah. essentially which yeah. is what pleasure is all about so we can still live our lives in you know the way that that we're, the way that we want to and if that really is that kind of like hustle lifestyle then go for it as long as you know you have that conscious awareness to say I'm doing this because I love it and I and it, it brings me joy and pleasure and and happiness you know yeah and mm. there's, there's something that you know I want to add that came up as you were as you were sharing um which is which is something again a lot of my work have been you know doing this work personally and then i start having realizations and i start sharing them and and um my professional work is very much informed by my personal journey so one of the things that for example i i, I realized and i learned in the past few years is that my experience of pleasure was still um indirect which means you know i would make love you know with women and many times i wouldn't have so much my own pleasure they would be, you know, you know, crazy deep, long orgasms, you know, like dozens and dozens of orgasms, you know, and hours of orgasms mm. and so on. And and I would kind of like to say this thing, which is like, no, it's okay, I don't need my pleasure. <laughs> it's okay. I don't need my pleasure. I'm enjoying your pleasure, and it's so fulfilling for me, which is also true. But there was also a, an element of disembodiment. There was an element of denying my pleasure, of disconnecting from my pleasure. So I was, mm. I was in the serving role, okay? I was in the witnessing role, which is another, you know, spiritual bypass. And I've done, you know, a lot of spiritual practice in my life. And in the past few yeah, years, okay. in the past few years, what I've discovered is actually, and that's, again, answering your question, why do we have such a problem with pleasure, is that, is that there's a shame, a guilt and a shame around experiencing direct pleasure. Direct pleasure is, you know, I'm with a woman, I'm touching her thighs, uh, I'm enjoying her thighs for me, you know, again, with proper consent and understanding of what it is. Instead of trying to pleasure her, I can be enjoying her thighs for me. And mm. that's and it's the same thing, you know, a woman can can um, can touch my hairy chest and I have a hairy chest and she can enjoy it for herself without trying to massage me, without trying to make, you know, give me pleasure. So it's totally okay to pleasure another person just so it's really, really clear. But it is as important to know how to take pleasure, you know, from yourself, by touching yourself, from the environment, you know, by touching, you know, fabrics and animals and, you know, plants and, you know, uh, furs and whatever, and with consent, touching another person for, for your pleasure. And mm -hmm. doing that is actually, is actually surprisingly or non-surprisingly pleasure, pleasurable for the other person. Because when you're really, really connected to the pleasure in your hand, and your hand is one of the most a sensitive and perceptive and orgasmic uh, part in your body, uh, like the other person can connect to their body if you're connected more to your body. 
And I know I've, I've mm. thrown a lot in, but that's that's really important. And that's I really recommend anybody who's, who's inspired by that to um, check out the work of the, the the school of consent. Okay, the wheel of consent yes. and the school of consent and their friends and uh, I literally am living in the in the villa that they found for me here in uh, Bali. So. Uh, so mm-hmm. yeah, I really endorsed their work, and I got a lot of personal, not not to mention professional, uh, value from that. And, and yeah, yeah and it's also, say- and it's also in my program. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, consent is such a great topic. We could talk about that in a, for a whole podcast, I'm sure, but we'll definitely link to that in the show notes because yeah. it's really important that people take responsibility for themselves and as well for their community by making sure that they're consenting to these things. But I totally just want to, like, second that when you were talking about receiving pleasure while giving pleasure and yeah, I mean, I notice it for myself and in my relationship. If I'm, if I'm, you know, pleasuring my man from a place of I'm just doing this to please him, there's something about it. Like it just doesn't feel. It's not coming from my heart, and it, it, I feel there's just something about it. And it, he can sense that. And the experience isn't as erotic. Whereas if I am really coming from a place like I want your cock in my mouth because I love the way that it feels when it touches the like deep and deep inside my throat that turns me on that brings me so much pleasure this makes me feel good and it's like a feedback loop and then it builds and builds and builds exactly and it's just such a delicious way to dance with another person when you're both fully receiving and giving at the same time it's just oh this little uh honey pot Goodness. <laughs> really. um, and, and I want to, I want to, um, we kind of like, we kind of like focusing a lot on pleasure. So if that's okay with you, you know, I want to, I want to talk about it from yet another level because that's, that's again, mm. I, I want to like also like point the, the, the wherever you're listening, the, that we're not just talking theory, we're actually talking, you know, practice, you know, so, mm. so it's the practice of touching another person with, you know, clarity and concert for your pleasure. And also, by the way, they're totally serving without without um, without taking. That's also important. And another aspect to to look at is <clears throat> is that the reason that many people don't have pleasure is that everything in our society and specific in sexuality is too fast, too hard, miseducated, which means people don't know where to touch and how to touch and when to touch. Okay. So, mm-hmm. so then they are trying to have pleasure, but ha- by having more sensation, and more sensation doesn't always give you more pleasure. Okay, I, I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't often look at porn, and I recently, like, like if I look at porn, I'm like, yeah, let's let's look at women orgasms. I kind of like, a, it's kind of like nearly um, like professional, like my interest. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing research. Um, so I would I would see all of these women orgasm and and it's nearly painful for me to see what they're doing to their body. Okay, so I'm looking at that and I'm like I'm like seriously does that doesn't that hurt you don't, don't you understand that you're actually hurting your body by rubbing you know your clit and generally your vagina so hard? And it's the same thing with hard fucking. I'm not against you know, um, I don't know how to call it conscious or connected or you know whatever like like sex which can be faster, but most of what you mm. see in porn and sometimes you know. I don't, I don't, you know, attract these women anymore. But sometimes I would, in the past, I would be with a woman who would like start jumping on me, like kind of like this up and down thing that you see in porn. Mm. And I was like, don't you feel like that's actually you're feeling less by doing this, and you would feel much more if you stay on me and you just rock your hips back and forth, side to side in circles. And yeah, the the, the very basic thing in order to feel pleasure is totally to stop doing anything. So one of the things that I teach in, you know, Awakening Female Ple- Pleasure, the program, is, you know, put a hand, put your hand on, on a woman's breast, you know, after a while and after you've, you know, gone around and around and around and around and then just stay there and let her feel your hand on her breast and you feel her breast in your hand and there's so much that you can, so much that you can feel without, you know, doing all of the squeezing things that I also see sometimes, yeah. you know? Again, fair enough. Like I enjoy, you know, squeezing a woman's breast sometimes, but but it's like start always from pausing and feeling and seeing like there's so much depth of sensation that comes. You know, I literally get like into orgasmic states 
sometimes by by putting my hand on the lover's body. It's like you don't actually have to rub and you don't need friction. So yeah, that's, that's <clears throat> to answer your question again, the reason that we have a, a problem with pleasure is sometimes even we seek pleasure, but but we fight or people fight for pleasure. They, they, they push for pleasure in order to relax into pleasure. Mm. Oh, yeah. I mean, like even I'm kind of melting hearing all of that. It's like, yeah, so true. And again, it's coming back to that spaciousness, like pleasure really does exist in, yeah. in spaciousness and, um, yeah, creating that in the bedroom and it, like kind of going in waves of doing and then stopping and resting because when you when you when you're moving with your lover or even with yourself, you're moving energy around, right? And it's you know yeah. it's like building up and it's coming back down and you, you're physically moving your body and then to stop and rest and to just feel those sensations. It's like watching the dust sort of settle and land and just enjoying that moment again, like really experiencing the pleasure of all of that energy that's just been moved around is, is just delicious. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And connecting to your partner, you know, it's like, it's like, um, it's so, it's so important to keep checking in through the eyes and through body language and through, through cues and through, you know, so, so we are enjoying our pleasure and we still connected to our partner. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, I, I loved what you said earlier about about you know taking the men's uh, cock into your mouth and just and just enjoying how it feels. And sometimes, sometimes I you know I share with lovers. It's like, it's like my <laughs> my cock is not a toothbrush. <laughs> okay, so what you see in porn, it's like it's like I am very very sensitive. Okay, there's a lot of sensation you know, in my cock. And if you, if you start rubbing me and taking me in and out, so, so forcefully, or kind of like doing like this jerking off movements that again, you see in porn, I'm like, I'm not into that. If mm. you just put me in your mouth, you can enjoy the feeling of, of my cock, like in your mouth and in your throat. And once you relax into this, you're going to have like amazing orgasms that you're not going to have like in any other way, you know? Mm. So, so they say, they say, yeah, you just want me to suck your cock. It's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> And, you know, it's like you would enjoy it much more than I do if you just relax and do nothing. Oh, and totally. also that's another example of that. And I love it that you share your personal, uh, your personal experience as well, you know, then you're not just, you know, an interviewer and mm. I'm like the, the expert. So, yeah, thank you for that. Well, yeah, no, you're welcome. I, I love it. I love talking about this stuff. Clearly, that's why I have a podcast <laughs> about <laughs> it. And uh, I mean, the throat is just such a beautiful area to explore as well. And um, it can be, uh, yeah, just another pleasure center and really deeply connected to our sex center as well. And I noticed that the more open and salivated I am, you know, that is reciprocated in my, in my yoni. And so exactly. it's just beautiful to, to play and, and explore and, Mm, and to work with our entire body, all of the bodies. Um, I actually wanted to circle back to something that you touched on uh, before, and we were talking about desire and lust and the shadow of that. And um, oh, I just, I'd love to dive into that a little bit more because I feel like desire can be really shamed, um, especially for for men from what I kind of from gather I, I need you to sort of speak to that a bit more but how can we kind of consciously um, you know, <laughs> whatever the, yeah, fuck, whatever like the fuck that whatever means. the fuck that means like how do we deal with our desire and with our lust and how do we um how do we work with all of the sexual energy that we can start to really cultivate um in a in a healthy way hmm yeah Great question. So first of all, by acknowledging, accepting, loving everything that you're desiring, everything that you're lusting, everything that you're feeling, everything that you're wanting, everything that is, you know, a thought that runs through your head once in a year, whatever, and everything that you turned on by. I don't mind if it's, you know, stuffed animals or if it's mm. whatever, you know, mm. um, so first of all, so, so first of all, do that, okay? And that by itself can take time. 
you know the, the most common 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 uh, desire that that I hear about from women that I really ashamed of is is you know rape uh, rape fantasies mm. so 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 that's that's kind of like a very very easy example um, rape fantasies doesn't mean that a woman that actually wants to be raped just to make it really really clear no okay what it means mean. what it mm. means is that a woman wants to be met by a masculine which is so strong that she surrenders that she chooses to surrender, not forced into surrender. Okay. Yeah. That she chooses to surrender and she just goes there and it's and, and she's just taken. Yeah, taken, taken open by this masculine. Yeah, ravished. Yeah. Ravished is a really good word. You know, uh, David Data says uh, ravish is the difference between ra- rape and ravishment is is consent. Mm. Okay, so rape can actually be very gentle. Okay, not you know forceful and knives and you know beating up or whatever, and and ravishment can actually be very intense. But consent, informed consent, obviously, is what makes the difference. So, mm. rape, fantasy, and by the way, for men and for women, because men have the same thing from the other side. Okay, and they don't actually want to rape women; they want to feel this the the the, the beauty of their own masculine, their own divine, healthy, integrated masculine. Uh, coming up to the surface, expressing itself, and then the woman, if she's ready to recognize that, recognizing that, and totally following that, and that doesn't mean that the man is better than the woman. Okay, just let's if we can. <laughs> gender, gender is another, you know, few hours broadcast, but but um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, just to just to say that for me, I've been exploring the feminine a lot, and I'm sure that people think that I'm gay when they see me dance and when they see me like wear clothes and so on. <laughs> and it's certainly okay, you know, if somebody's listening and they're gay, I am speaking with, with you know, hetero terms because that's been my experience. Um, just with this, you know, masculine, feminine thing, that, 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 is, that is part of the desires, by the way, okay? Yeah. The, the desire to, to, to be in the extremities, the desire to be a slut, the desire to be a, a virgin, the desire to be a wild woman, the desire to play, you know, certain, you know, forbidden, forbidden games and, and so on. So, so first of all, First of all, acknowledge all of that and you can journal. And by the way, a lot of these uh, exercises are in the book. The book is literally like you can take months of, of, you know, one or two hours a day and you will still have like, like things to do with the book. Okay. There's a lot. Mm, awesome. um, yeah. So yeah, write it down and then, and then sometimes see what it means. Or sometimes you need like professional you know, guidance to see what that means. If you have a certain, if you have a certain desire and many things are really like, like simple. You know, it's like like some women. It's like, oh, it's like I'm really ashamed of it. I want to be fucked by two men. I'm mm. like, um, cool. You know, that's like, like that's doable. That's like you can you can fulfill that if you want. Yeah. Okay. And and um, start seeing how first of all you can do this by yourself, and in some ways you might be able to explore this by yourself. You might explore be able to share this with your partner, and maybe your partner will be really willing to do this. Uh, if your partner judges you, uh, they have an issue with sex and sexuality and guilt and shame and stuff. Okay, like, yeah. like, like most people do. Um, and yeah, sometimes you will go to a professional that would you would act some of this this stuff with. Okay, so so some people go to um, to professionals in order to be I don't know tied and beaten up. Okay, and uh, I think a lot of the kink world is is dis- dysfunctional, but I I do agree that for some people they want a certain experience and they can pay and they can get it. Mm. Okay, like your partner is not supposed to be a sexual professional expert that's going to fulfill all of your desires and fantasies and ways of touch or whatever. And in, in the same way that that you're not expecting your your um, your partner to um, um, be a dentist. Yeah. Right. You your know. dentist, your therapist, yeah. your yeah, your yeah, everything else that we rely on on everybody else. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, does that answer the question, or should we elaborate? You know, there's, there's always more. Mm, no, I think that's good. There's definitely always more. I feel um, something's just coming up for me that I wanted to sort of inquire about, and that is uh, just. I feel like with this whole feminine rising kind of movement that's been happening for a while now, we've really gotten into, um, you know, there's a lot of information out there on kind of female embodiment and, and pleasure and, um, 
I I often wonder what it's like for for the men in this industry and how they can kind of own their desires and not experience that shame. I know we kind of just touched on it, but I still feel like there can be so much confusion for the masculine, correct me if I'm wrong, for for wanting to Uh. penetrate and ravish their women. Like, I want to fuck this woman open, but, you know, like, does that make me a rapist? Like, what am I supposed to say? How do I approach her? Like, and then there's this shaming and and dimming. So uh, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I want to first relate to the first thing that you said, that there's a lot of, you know, feminine rising, feminine, this feminine, that, and a lot of it is, I know it's like, I think that it's great with doing, you know, personal development work and, and so on, but so much of it is disinformed and misinformed, disempowering and re-traumatizing or actually, Mm. you know, it's like creating more problems between men and women because it's again, unbalanced okay yes. so yes there's been a lot of bad things perpetu- perpetrated by men you know for years and also there were a lot of bad things perpetrated by women for many years i call it the women of the patriarchy okay? mm-hmm. yeah totally <clears throat> so so first of all it's you know i i i see this so much in the field you know somebody is like oh i'm going to empower women i'm like and, and you know and she's like having like big problems with herself and her sexuality and disempowerment and, and so on and and honestly, I've walked through this, and I still walk through this. Okay, it's like I'm not, uh, I'm I'm not enlightened yet. I know maybe next Tuesday, but but right now, <laughs> definitely not. And um, and I see a lot of stuff in the field, which is which is sometimes I don't even know. It's like if to to like how how can I say that? You know, it's like to to say anything, you know, because sometimes people are not even open for this because they're riding it's kind of like yeah the feminine is rising and you know now the feminine the collective feminine is awakening and you know uh, consciousness is awakening on the planet i don't know i think mm-hmm. there seems to be more mcdonald's than, than, than any time in history okay yeah. so so yeah that's that's that um with men it's very confusing it's confusing for me as well and i'm still navigating that um there's definitely there's a lot of mixed messages not just in society like there's always been but also in the tantra world and personal development world and so on um so first of all you know let's 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 take a a step back or the first step is actually to acknowledge that that we are misinformed and miseducated you know if you're talking to the men okay it's like you didn't learn about sex and you learned it from porn and you learned it from i know all the siblings or, or whatever and and your whole view on yourself masculinity femininity sexuality like you're living in a matrix and most of what you know is is either slightly untrue or very untrue let's just start with that Mm. yeah okay and i mean i'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news (laughs) but that's that's really good place to start is to is to literally question everything okay yeah um the second is to is to start to seek um Again, the word conscious is, is, a, is a joke, but to start to see if there's, there's some kind of, of uh, semblance of consciousness in, for example, men's work. A lot of men's work is basically getting guys to be, I don't know, like tough and whatever, and other men's work is getting them to be, I don't know, uh, fucked in the ass uh, with a dildo by, by women. You know? So it's like you need to, <laughs> you really need to exercise uh, um, discernment there. Uh, Mankind Project is one thing that I can recommend, for example. Okay, Mankind Project, I've done, uh, I've done the, the. Is that with uh, Preston Smiles? Uh, that's with many people. So there's there's not one person who created that. That's that's oh. yeah, you know, a, a group of men who created that. That's that's okay, very, very beautiful. Cool. Okay. Well, we can link to that again in the show notes for listeners who are interested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, read David Dada, and again, David Dada has his own problems, and you know, everything is you know, nothing is perfect, okay. But at least yeah. I got a lot, you know, from David Dada's work. Um, yeah, his books are amazing. Again, we'll link in the show notes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and then you know, start start you know asking for feedback from women and. Um, one of the things that for me I learned, one of the reasons that I'm doing this work is I, I ask for, for a lot of feedback from women and I'm pretty good in receiving feedback, uh, especially if I, you know, trust that the person is actually know what they're talking about. You know, sometimes I get feedback and it's like projection. So, so and even if it is projection, you know, learn to identify the projections. You know, so learn to stay mm. in your center when you feel that you are uh, real and don't, don't budge, okay? Because a woman, you know, people say it's like, oh, you have to respect all women. Um, 
the word respect is a bit funny here. Like you, you, you kind of like have compassion for all people, but you respect people according to merits, according to actions. Mm. You don't get automatic, you know, you don't actually receive anybody that anything that anybody says just because they are a woman or just because they're an elder or just because they are whatever. Mm. Um, so yeah, and that takes time. And sometimes you need to take a second opinion and sometimes you need to take a third opinion. Okay. It's, it's really good to have, um, again, that word conscious, um, as much as possible, empowered, independent male friends. Okay. And also to have, you know, female friends that you believe are, are, you know, conscious to, to one level or another. Um, also connecting to your feminine is something really important. Mm. And also I kind of like joked about it before, but I, I got a lot from that, but you connect to your femininity as a man. Okay. So, so it's, it's a different thing. Femininity in the man and the femininity in the woman, it's, it's different. How is it different? Because, you know, I, I have male followers who come to me and they're like, oh, you know, I had this beautiful kind of sensual lovemaking session last night with myself. I'm like, that's awesome. But for some reason, I feel like that is, that is a very feminine thing to do. And I, and I wonder if that really serves their masculine essence or like, what are some, or uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that? It- like, uh, I think it totally serves them, okay? And, and one of the things that we've been, if it's, if it's, again, it's a sensual, self-loving, connected experience with oneself because so much of, of you know, I know that the, before Tantra, I jerked off. I rubbed my penis, you know, hopefully with some oil, and that was, that was masturbation, Yeah. okay? And now, and in, you know, the past few years, I'm discovering different ways, sometimes even without an erection. Sometimes it's not even about, you know, the, the, the performance and the goal of, you know, obviously there's, there's hardly ever ejaculation, but the, the, the idea is to connect to the feminine, connect to body, emotion, sensations. <clears throat> and, then, um, and then expand on that together with a woman. And then when you're mm-hmm. a woman, it, it can look in many, many different ways. And one of the things that I, that I discovered is that I can still be in the leading guiding not exactly guiding but let's say you know the more emissive side while still being very much in my orgasm and in my pleasure and in my sensation in my body and so on but i'm still being the man i'm still staying the man and uh, mm-hmm. dance is a really good example for that and i mentioned that i'm also a dancer a dancer which means i yeah. dance by myself and i also dance with women I dance with men as well you know so um, right. So you're really talking about kind of being able to embody sort of, you know, both both ex- aspects. So you have access to that sensuality and that spectrum of of pleasure through the feminine and being sensitive to that and being able to experience it, but then also being able to kind of lead and, um, you know, penetrate and, you know, insert all of those classic masculine characteristics here. Yeah, sort yeah, of thing. yeah. And I'll talk about, I'll talk about dance for a moment just because it's such a, such a good, uh, um, it was such a good realization for me. And, and now like I enjoy so much, you know, playing with that, which is mm-hmm. I used to lead from ego. I used to be like, I'm going to turn you this way. And if a woman tried to turn the other way, like I would, you know, stop her and, you know, turn her the way that I wanted her to turn. Okay, and I still had like some good dances, but it was more forceful. Okay, which is the which is the um, the shallow masculine, the, the the not not healthy masculine. Okay, it was still controlling. It was still you know, but me with what I wanted. Um, and then um, a really good teacher and colleague uh, called Sasha Cobra said, you know, a good leader knows how to follow. And that didn't just change my dancing. It's like it changed a lot of things in my life because suddenly I I. I saw how it's applicable. So now when I dance with women, yes, I still, from the outside, it looks like I'm leading them. And they would say, wow, like you're so good in leading me. But I'm good in leading them because I'm sensitive enough, perceptive enough, soft enough, relaxed enough, in the moment enough to actually feel them, which is, which is the all feminine qualities. Mm. Okay. I'm surrendering not to them and their guidance. And if a woman tries to make me dance, you know, I just, I just pause and look at her awkwardly so she gets she gets the message okay and then she relaxes and she allows me to allows me to dance her to guide her and so many women tell me like oh my god it's so it's so nice for me to 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 surrender to you and your guidance in the dance and for me my natural flow my natural energy my natural character 
is to guide and to hold a woman in dance, in bed, and in life. But I'm doing that mm-hmm. with the feminine qualities. And I'm also, I'm also celebrating accepting her feminine qualities. Okay? Because many times it's like I would, I, I have, I surrender to women in the things that the women are much better than, than me at. Mm. Yeah. That is so beautiful. And it's, yeah, wow, that is just awesome. I love everything that you said there. And, you know, again, sort of going back to what we were saying before about this, like the, the whole feminine rising, I sort of sometimes feel like it's a bit of a feminine rising superiority thing, right? So it's, exactly. it's nice. Entitlement. Yeah, entitlement. So I'm a goddess. <laughs> I'm like, really? Are you? I'm a, I'm a goddess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Praise the goddess. Um, so I think it's really important that we together – you know, support each other in our in our rising and in our growth and not to emasculate men and um yeah, just sort of practice a little bit more compassion for both of these energies that we have inside ourselves and in our partners. So mm. Yeah, exactly. Epic. <laughs> Epic. Okay. You can't, you can't imagine how many times I uh, I, I see see mate and experience this, you know, but uh yeah, that's that's part of the path of that. That's part of the work that we're doing, that you're doing. You know, it's like I'm sure that sometimes you get a guest, maybe even myself, and you get like some responses from some women who would hate what I said, get like totally triggered by what I say. And that's okay. That's that's their right to yeah. get triggered. You know, it's like, and and you know, I might be wrong in some things that I'm saying as well. You know, it's like like I said, it's like nobody's nobody's perfect, and I'm learning all the time. Mm. So, so yeah, it's just by having mature conversation. It's not, you know, the the Vogue five tips to get your man of three <laughs> things to eat to become orgasmic or all of that bullshit. Yeah, totally. This is this is deep, deep conversations. And also one of the things that I invite people to do is instead of saying this or that, to see how they can hold both or let's say to hold various possibilities and various options at one time. Okay, open relationship or closed relationship? Both and neither. Mm. Okay, some relationships are good for some people, some of the time, not for all of the people, all of the time. And what is open and closed? They're not like, there's not one thing. Okay, there's a range. Okay, uh, whatever, ejaculation, clitoral orgasm, all of this stuff. It's like I used to be really, really extreme about things. Okay, I had actually one ejaculation, one in a few years. It was really, really nice and, and, and meaningful. I'm really happy that I had there. I also had like, Others that were not so much. Mm-hmm. Okay, so all of this stuff, desires, like see how you can first accept, like I said earlier, accept something and how you can accept the opposite of something. Because only when you are okay, maybe not experiencing, you know, directly, but if you are okay with both possibilities or let's say with multiple of possibilities, then you can really go into each one of them or whatever one of them that you that you choose. Mm. Okay, and that's not just in sex, just that that's in life. Yeah. Okay, vegetarianism or veganism or fruitarianism or flex or whatever, you know, it's like it's like what about you do what your body feels and not what you know you define yourself and you you know you have a shirt that says that you're that. Yeah, beautiful. I love that. And you know, that just comes down to the constant practice of checking in with yourself and making sure that you are exactly. checking in with your heart and, you know, meditating, getting quiet, just making sure that you're connected and that you're in integrity with what you need and learning the tools, like learn how to communicate effectively, learn nonviolent communication, like how to how to communicate from your heart and not from a place of story or projection and keeping an open mind. Yeah, and get, and I would add to that. Sorry for interrupting you. I, I would add to that. Get psychotherapy. I was so against psychotherapy for years. You know, I've done so many like different, received so many different healing modalities, mm. and you know they were important and they are still important. But you know what? There are some right now. My psychotherapist is actually um, she's working with parts therapy, and I've I've kind of like intuited intuitively known about parts therapy when I was young. I kept saying we are we have multiple personalities and it's normal and mm. natural you know um but she's doing it with an integrated approach that, that integrates spirituality integrates sexuality you know and so that's very embodied psychotherapy it's not just yeah. you know woody allen has been receiving you know psychotherapy for the past 50 years i don't think he's in, in better shape 
than than he was, you know, fifty years ago. Okay, so so yeah, like getting and again, I see this in the tantra world and personal development world. People, uh, uh, you know, getting a human design um, reading or going into Tony, Tony Robbins thing or going into a sex uh, sexuality workshop and they think that's that's a replacement for therapy. Mm. It's not. Mm. Okay, so get therapy. Yes, oh. everybody needs therapy. I love that you said that. Everybody needs. I therapy. love my therapist so much. I'm going to see her tomorrow, and I can't oh. wait. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally sick of that. I love doing like the body work and all <coughs> the like, you know, alternative healing modalities and like moving things like through my body as well. But then that that talks like a therapy is just like it's like the icing on the cake. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, and I. And now, uh, just before I finish, you know, it's like, it, it's funny because sometimes I want to say something, <laughs> I, I want to say the exact opposite. Quick, if quick, you're quick. just seeing therapist, <laughs> if you're just seeing therapist and you have a pain in your vagina, maybe you need to go to see, you know, a sexual healer. You know, first of all, obviously, read the book, you know, touch yourself inside and, you know, do the practices. And maybe you need to see a sexual healer that would actually put, you know, a dildo or their finger, you know, inside and get you to um make some sounds and shout and scream and and whatever and learn how to, learn how to breathe and how to relax your muscles because you've been clenching them for years because you watched some fucking jdeg uh, um <laughs> course <laughs> and um yeah like like we need the verbal we need the we need the physical we need the energetic we need the spiritual we need the solo we need the partnered we need the community we need all of them yeah totally okay, it's not one one magic pill but thing. no there is no that's magic it. pill i love that you said that and it, it's so relevant because it's like i mean female orgasm i believe is like 99 percent emotional and you know mm. it's just like a lot of this yeah like you're saying jda practices and using crystal wands and all of that kind of stuff but um, vagina massage, everything can be really, really great. But again, it's like if, if you're not kind of clearing some of the emotional blockages that are getting in your way through other forms of therapy, like psychotherapy, then you still just don't have a chance. So, mm. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we are cool. going to wrap this up now. I've got a couple of quick cues before we do, and we're just going to yeah. whip through them real quick. So the first one is how do you cultivate more pleasure in your life? self-pleasuring if possible daily and i have to admit i don't always do that daily um so that and also keep connecting to the sensations in my body and in my hands in in any moment mm. and in the, yep in the body and the hands in the moment awesome next question is what's one thing you've learned about self-love recently <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> start? yeah <laughs> the first the first um yeah okay so so personally again and and i many a lot in my in my life i try to serve others and i have done like good work serving others you know but through you know the, the the books and programs and workshops and sessions and so on and one of the things that i realized is that i was actually avoiding serving and healing and empowering myself and it's not that i'm disempowered <laughs> you know i have quite an empowered, you know, independent life, but still, and still, I realized that a lot of my work for others have been a, a projection and a, and a denial and a, how do you say that, uh, diversion from actually caring for myself. So right now I'm still doing this work, but I don't feel that I have, I don't have the savior complex anymore. I don't feel like, oh, I have to like reach, you know, 5 million people by 2025 or something like that. Wow, have. that's so So, so first of all, self-love, First of all, thank you. First of all, self-love, you know, care for yourself. And once you care for yourself and you're happy and you're radiant, everybody around you will feel it and will get the transmission. And then, yes, you can, you know, devote your life to saving, you know, it's like kids in Africa or, you know, people down the street in the, in the homeless uh, shelter or whatever, you know, uh, executives, uh, high-paid executives that want to kill mm. themselves. You know, but first start with yourself and, you know, do the therapy. Do the therapy. <laughs> okay, and then do yeah. the therapy, you know, and get those, you know, the, the body the armoring sessions and go to whatever. And then, you know, it's like you would, uh, that's, that's self-love. Yeah. 
that's that's one of the aspects of self. Epic. And yeah, thank you for saying that because that's like, that's big, that's big. <laughs> okay, yeah. last question is what is one of the most impactful books that you've ever read? I know it's like asking you to choose your favorite child, but you're only allowed to say one and give it your best shot. Yeah, I'm, I'm a very, I, I read tons of books. <laughs> The one that popped, the one that popped to my to my mind, I guess that is, is the obstacle is the way by Ryan Holiday. Ooh. I have read everything that Ryan Holiday wrote, and I, I will read. I believe everything that he. Maybe I didn't read read all of the all of the uh, ancient Greek uh, writings, but it basically takes all of the um, teachings. I, I keep having Sparta in my head. It's not Sparta. <laughs> um, Seneca, come on. It's funny. I, I tell you about the book, and I don't remember the. I don't remember the. Um, the I don't remember the actual modality that's called. But he basically, he basically, basically um, empowers people to take full responsibility over their life mm-hmm. and see whatever comes in their life. You know, the obstacle is the way. Whatever stands in the way becomes the way. Yeah. Um, so, so this is a very, very strong. It's you can you can call it spiritual again. What the fuck does it <laughs> mean? Uh, it's a very empowering book. Okay, so so this is this is the book that uh, I'm sure that one second after we hang up, I will remember the name yeah. of the the modality. But right now, I have Sparta in my head. Oh, so, good. Uh, yeah. uh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, so and again, I just want to I want to thank you, and I want to give you the opportunity to let everybody know where they can find you and your work, um, and any other offerings that you've got coming up. So, yeah, what what's on what's on the menu? Um, yeah, first of all, the, the thing is called Stoicism. I, uh, <coughs> I, I Googled it. <laughs> um, yeah, Stoicism is the, yeah. So, um, what's happening for me? First of all, I am very happy to say that after years of requests, uh, people that couldn't uh, come to my uh, workshops because they were, you know, half around the world or they, they had the kids on the weekend or whatever, I created an online program called Awakening Female Pleasure. Um, you know, as a woman, if you ever had a guy, you know, kiss you too fast, touch your boobs too fast, try to, you know, finger you too fast, too strong, too hard, uh, penetrate you and so on, didn't know how to communicate with you and so on. This is the thing to teach the men. And again, as a man listening to it, I'm not, you know, blaming you. You have been disinformed. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I've spent literally my life, like I'm, I'm looking at the stuff in the, in the program that, that I learned as a teenager. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what can I say? I became quite good in in pleasuring women. So if this is this is something that is interesting for you, and you understand that it's not just about sex, but really about connection and about you know co empowerment, about connection to yourself, the, I'm, I'm really happy about the program. Mm. I actually shot it in Bali. Okay, so that uh, has Bali uh, Bali vibe to it. <laughs> and uh, we put a link in the show yeah. notes uh, to the program. Yeah, um, I am actually. Um, generally in my life, turning my passions and my hobbies into into income streams and into products and services and offerings. Yeah, beautiful. So recently I went into um, actual professional DJing. <coughs> that might might sound totally not related, you know, to what we said, but I've discovered over the past few years of being a dancer that we can talk a lot about tantra and sex and so on. I can feel of those things and I can, you know, work with these things just with a simple dance clothes on in a room full of people. So, so by the music that I DJ and curate and, you know, I basically create whole space and, and create a certain environment with the music that I, I play. And I'm running a retreat called Tantra Dance and Purpose. Mm. So connecting to sexuality and, and um, sexuality in touch and orgasm and all of that stuff dancing a lot and then also you know sensual dance solo dance couples dance mm. and also through that looking at our life purpose that can you know usually it's like the professional one but it can also be the personal one so that's that's coming up as well so uh, yeah. so yeah that's i'm really excited about that and i'm i want to say also that i'm available like i really love like this interviews um yeah, so if people would have their own audience and their own channels, I'm very happy to uh, be a guest. And if somebody wants to organize a workshop, to organize um, a sensual dance event, to organize anything like that, uh, I'm very, very Collaboration. Happy to oh, uh, that, well, that's good yeah. to know. On that note, thank, yeah. thank you. 
and on that note thank you Laura because because yeah I'm really really enjoying this yeah it's been yeah, it's so. been a great conversation I'm, I'm super grateful I, I absolutely cannot yeah. wait to share this with the world so yeah thank you for your time and thank yes, you thank for your you. beautiful work and your purpose and your mission and I'm just so excited to hearing more seeing more doing more and yeah collaborating again in the future <laughs> I will be very happy to. We have so many, uh, so many avenues we started exploring, you mm. know, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy of, of the way that uh, it turned out. And I'll be also happy to hear from people when you share it or when they, they read this on my, you know, channels, like, what did you get out of this? You know, let's be practical. Yeah. What's one realization that you get, that, that you got? And if you want to share it in the comments or email it yeah like Laura or myself very both of us would be very happy to uh, yeah absolutely read, read, I want to know I want to know it all <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode hit like and subscribe on your favorite podcast app and don't forget to share it with someone who you think could benefit from hearing it too you can also sign up for La Lula News and stay up to date with all the juicy content that we only share on email And I want to take a moment to honor you for following your curiosity and prioritizing your pleasure in this way. And until next time, thank you so much for listening and I'll be back with another episode soon.